Hey, welcome back to our channel. In today's episode, we're coming to you from inside the chicken tower and we're gonna share with you why our work has been completely ground to a halt. Hey there, if you're new to our channel, we're two rebels off grid, left Colorado as fast as we could. Here we set up camp on our Outlaw Acres farmstead and we are multiplying in droves. You're such a dork. <laughs> right, so it's all been rumors and lots of talk up until recently. We told you about these little chicks that we're supposed to be getting and, and the bad news was that we get gonna get them a lot earlier than expected. Yep. And we should have had this baby all finished already for those chicks, but we needed another three weeks and lo and behold, we finally got chickens. Yeah, so they came in the mail. We did mail order chickens. We've never done that before and it was kind of weird, but we wanted real specific breeds and we weren't really sure what the availability was going to be around this area for chickens, like in the feed stores and stuff. Like normally that's how we'd buy them, but we just had heard lots of rumors that chickens might be hard to come by this year. So we ordered them. I think we ordered them in January thinking, oh, we'll definitely have the coop done by then. Not realizing that the weather was going to not cooperate like we want it to. <laughs> and we, um, we also just had some things happen. It's just normal stuff that we're working around, but the little baby chicks came in the mail. They came in two separate shipments. The first shipment was the guinea fowl, which we ordered seven of them. We got eight and one was deceased on arrival, unfortunately, but that happens. And then the second batch, we got 25 laying, or they'll be laying hens, 25 females or hens. And then we also got, I think I ordered either four or five roosters in that batch. So snake slayers, snake slayers. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. And bug eaters. That's also what we're hoping. So they came fine the first night when we got up, we checked on them and one had passed away and we haven't had any pass away since then. So we have a total right now of 36. Yeah. And they're pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, the more chickens you have, the more safe they feel. So I think that that's why they're being so quiet at night, but we're not uh, complaining, obviously. We nope. get to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're in the trailer with us. So you guys know we're living in our RV while we build out our property and it feels really small right now. It's already a small RV, but we've got this box in there with the chicks and uh, it's pretty tight squeeze. And it smells slightly like a barn in our RV right now at the moment, but we are keeping their little brooder box nice and clean. And we tried a new kind of brooder that, or a brooder lamp that they have. It's not even a lamp. That's what we've used in the past is those silver heat lamps that you just kind of slowly raise them up as the chicks get bigger and they need less heat. When they first come home, they need to be kept at around 95 degrees, I believe. And we bought these, we bought two of them and they are basically kind of like radiant heat and they're really low wattage, which works awesome with our solar setup that we're using right now. I think they run off 25 watts, each of them. So they are nice and warm, but you don't have to worry about fires with anything catching on fire and they can get out from underneath them if they're too hot or they go under, you know, and snuggle together for warmth. But they're, we bought them from uh, Murray McMurray Hatchery, and they sell these. They're they're not that expensive. I definitely like them better than the heat lamps. They feel a lot safer, and also they don't heat up our trailer, which is nice because we're we you know we don't need it any warmer. So progress. All right. So as you can see behind me, we are on row ten, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're on row nine. And yeah. we are stopped at the moment. 
Um, <clears throat> we did set up our scaffolding. We've done what we can. Uh, you may be able to see a little window up here on the top. We put in our cleats um, that will be holding up all of our mesquite branches for the perches. This one. Yeah, these little guys. Right I'm telling you, they are solid. I could probably sit a motorcycle on one of these cleats <laughs> and they would not go anywhere. But this thing, we're, it's looking good. We're yeah. kind of disappointed that we had to stop. Uh, but we didn't things have happen. To, yeah, we, we don't actually have to stop, but we kind of needed to for our own physical health, I guess. <laughs> well, it's not only physical. Yeah. It was uh, the, the real reason why we stopped is Bonnie, once again. <laughs> well, we're, I mean, we've become very dependent on our tractor as we're doing this build. We shared with you guys in an earlier video that we, we meaning Doug, <laughs> was hauling five gallon buckets of dirt from where we're mixing the hyper adobe mix over here to the build site. It's not far, but it's, it, you know, it's heavy. The, the wet um, dirt is not light. So he's like hauling it over. And then we figured out a way from a friend of ours that suggested that we start using our tractor instead, which we should have thought to do. But anyway, we switched over and started using the tractor to do all the heavy work, which has been amazing. And that's why we were able to build this as quick as we were. Um, but we've become dependent on her and she had a problem the other day. Yeah, she got a flat running over mesquite brush. Uh, those mesquite thorns will go through tires like a tractor tire. Yeah. And the problem lies in I don't have the equipment to pull the tire off and replace the inner tube. So we've been shopping around for services to fix tires around here. And it's pretty much slim to none. There is a lot of people that will be willing to do it, but they want you to bring the inner tube. And unfortunately, nobody carries the, un the inner tube to our front wheel tractor. So we- Yeah, it's a specific size, specifically for tractor tires. They're not like a regular inner tube for a car. So we ended up finally, we found one that we thought would work and we, oh, we spent the whole day trying to find a dang inner tube, but we never did find the right one. So we actually ended up ordering them on Amazon and we ordered four thinking we'll probably need one again at some point in the future and it'll be good to have them on hand. So yeah, but well, the wheel was off. I noticed that there was a extreme leak in the front drive axle. So it is leaking uh, gear oil. And so I also had to order, and this is why it's good to get an old tractor, guys, because I got the manual, I got a parts store, and they actually carried the gaskets for this. So that's in the mail. It should yeah. be here in a couple days. We got that coming in. I pinched my back the other day carrying one of these windows. So that kind of, I've been kind of thinking it's a blessing in disguise, having the tractor break down and me break down at the same time. So, but I'm all good. I'm just waiting for this tractor. The tractor parts come in, our tire to get fixed. And she is like purring. She is, uh, we've changed her oil out. We, um, uh, all the bolts. Put in oil filter. Yeah. I cleaned out the gas line filter. She's, uh, yeah, she, she got, got completely lubed. Finally bought a grease gun, lubed all the lubricant on it. Duh. That She is really purring now. So I was really surprised. I mean, when we bought her, she didn't sound this good. Yeah, So true. It's yeah. just, uh, we're just waiting for those parts and we will be back on this wall. We did make some progress, like we said. We, Actually, maybe I'll put in a video or we'll wait till the next video to show you the windows that we've installed for not only airflow, but for more light because the bottle wall will not be enough light. It'll give a really nice, interesting lighting, but this other window will have a shutter on it and it'll allow either we can control the wind coming in or the light coming in or whatever, but it will be facing south. Yeah, for those of you that have raised chickens, you know they need that natural light. They're not gonna be cooped up all the time. They will be outside and in the run and also free ranging around the property when the dogs are big enough to protect them. And uh, But they do need natural light to keep on their, their egg laying rhythm. It has a lot to do with how and when they lay their eggs. So we wanna make sure they've got enough light and air circulation in here too. 
But I'll tell you what, like we've never been around Hyper Adobe in person. Everything we knew was what we saw on TV, right? And it's like, it's like a rock. I can't even, it's just crazy. It is like, you can't tell from looking, but I mean, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's solid, like solid. And we're sitting down on the ground because it's windy. And we actually sitting down on the ground, we're still getting a little wind coming in, but nothing like if we were standing up right now. Yep. And if you notice our secondary primary color going on over here, this is uh, the scaffolding. We finally got yeah. it out of the boxes and we got it up because we started putting up this ninth row and Carrie couldn't put the dirt in the buckets. And I was starting to struggle getting it up and over into the buckets, the dirt. Yeah. Uh, and so we said, okay, it's time to break the scaffolding out. We don't believe we'll need the scaffolding on the outside of the wall yet because uh, until we plaster, because yeah. we can do all the tampering that we can from the inside of the building. So we can reach around and Carrie made, Carrie made this cool tool. <laughs> I tried to make, I made this tool actually so that I wouldn't have to climb a tall ladder outside to do the tamping because I've been doing the side tamping. So I made this tool. It's basically like a 90 degree, it's a 90 degree angle that can lay over the bags. And um, I actually should be able to like lean over and hit the outside. And that should, in theory, <laughs> make a nice straight wall as we're going up. And I made this part long enough to drape over two rows so that the the one they it should just naturally level itself as you go that's my that's my theory and i bought a nice heavy two pound rubber mallet to um it's not it's nice because it's heavy but it's not too heavy for me because thor's hammer yeah <laughs> the tampering hammer of doom so we'll be hopefully we'll try that out and we'll let you know once we get to lay in bags again, how that works. Yeah, the other tool that we updated was our screen. The one that I originally built, the mesh was too small and it was it was not holding up well. We also decided to start using the tractor for the screen. So we built a new screen. We took the old one apart and repurposed it basically, but we added some stuff and Doug's gonna go and explain more about that. We took some advice from, it's a YouTube channel called Terraform Together. And we made a more hardcore sifter. We didn't have four by fours, but we uh, decided to just use scrap wood in the existing sifter to build this. And it took me three minutes to take two bucket loads and sift out all this. Now the other thing, we changed something. We, instead of having quarter inch, uh, hardware cloth cloth we went up to the one inch and this will mean that before we were basically half of this pile of dirt was being sifted and was being not used for the earth bags but now it is going to only discard the larger rocks as you can see here meaning less loads down to get more dirt um, we should be able to utilize a lot more of this dirt because it doesn't hurt to have one inch rocks in there at all. Um, so this is going to speeden up our work. So far, we have, this took three minutes for me and Carrie to make a mound of sifted dirt right there. It would have taken us 20 to 30 minutes, both of us shoveling. Um, I just got to figure out how I'm going to maneuver my tractor around this and set it up so it's optimal. And uh, I think we just cut another hour worth of work off our daytime and our backs by doing this little thing. Uh, but I'm going to try to put up a row today. We didn't put up any rows yesterday because we've been doing a lot of stuff that we needed to get done and we need uh, to let our backs rest for a night. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to see how much faster this is. So the cool thing about actually having some downtime and not being hyper-focused on the chicken coop is it's actually freed up our time to do some things that we really needed to do. 
and it's not like critical stuff, but it's stuff that needed to get done. So that's kind of cool. So it's worked out really well with the timing and everything. So we actually increased the size of our animal enclosure. Most of you know that we had, um, we had bought five foot tall field fencing and the puppies are just, they're getting bigger. We've been letting them sleep outside at night and not locking them into their doghouse anymore because they're essentially the size, a little, even a little bit bigger than the coyotes that we have around here. So we've been keeping a close eye and listening at night and uh, we wanted to give them a little bit more space. And then of course we built that additional shelter inside this enclosure the mystery and shelter the mystery shelter a lot of you have been guessing on what it is and, and i like your guesses because yeah. you're saying it's for chickens i like your guesses but hmm. some of you that might be a plan b yeah that might be a plan b but it's not for chickens yep just sit back and relax for the next three four minutes and Enjoy the video. Oh, here it is. It's for goats. Goats. We got, <laughs> we got goats. So we got three goats. And why did we get them? Why did we get three goats? So a couple reasons. First and foremost was we didn't want our livestock guard dogs to get too much bigger without being around livestock. They, the livestock guard dogs were actually born on a farm that raises goats and, and other livestock. And they've been around livestock when they were younger, but we didn't want to go too much time between them coming home with us and having some actual livestock. And we decided they obviously they can't be around the chickens because the chickens are too small and we don't want to have issues with them going after the chickens. So we decided to get goats because we wanted to get a few goats and the goats are more kind of pets than anything else. We may eventually breed them so that we can milk them. And they are Nigerian dwarf goats. They're a smaller goat. They're primarily used as dairy goats. They have, I think they have, if not the highest butterfat content in their milk, they're like in second place, but I think they're actually the highest. So the thing that's cool about Nigerian dwarf goats, you can eat them if you, you know, in a pinch, we would not probably do that, but our goats are not going to be bigger than 60 pounds, I think is their maximum, and they're a smaller stature goat. Reminds you of your baby days? They just spit it back up on you. Yeah. Do you want some? Oh, it's getting all over her face. I'm so They're sorry. Messy. You guys want some milk too? Here. Oh, Will, look at that. <laughs> Here, you can have some, sweetie. Will and Zoe are so like sweet. getting into this now. Okay, you want more? Okay. Oh my God, Willow and Zoe, <laughs> seriously. Oh, this one's done. She banged it. So oh. she drank about three quarters of it. Okay. Oh, she he's figured it out. Nice. There and you you're now weaned. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Oh, you know. that's how it works for a moment. Awesome, Zoe. You gonna learn how to oh milk off of the bottle? <laughs> Zoe's like, that reminds me of my mama. Okay, I'll get more. <laughs> Look at Zoe. She's like, oh, I'm a Zoe. goat too. I'm a goat. <laughs> I'm a goat. Oh my gosh. Well, are you a goat? Well, are you a goat? You're a goat. Yeah, she's oh, a goat too. You're a goat too. Look, you guys get milk. Oh my gosh. Oh no, this is gonna start something bad, isn't it? Oh no, don't give other. Willow the milk. No, they that's for the goats. Oh, you want some we milk? Think they oh, they oh, oh, you all goat dogs. Oh. <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's Zoe so funny. Axe murderer. Hey, I'm gonna drink their food now. <laughs> I think they're okay. As long as I get this stuff. Oh my gosh, so he's like, okay, maybe it's good to have them here. Maybe they're our friends. How did she get them? So the thing that's cool about them is they are, it's less feed. They don't eat as much as like a full-size standard, what people would raise as a meat goat. So we decided we definitely wanted at least two because goats, they like to be in, they don't like to be alone. They're not a, a you know, you don't want to get just one goat. They'll be sad. And that would be terrible. So, so we decided we get two females, and then we decided also to get a male. And this this little buck will be a weather, is what it's called. And a weather is a castrated goat. Ouch. Yeah. So he's not. We need to do that because we don't. He's a brother of these females, and we don't want them having children. 
together, kids together. You don't want a brother with the same mother. No. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and he's, he's more for companionship for them and also protection. So he will help protect them. He's, he's still too small to do that though, but when he gets big enough, he'll be protective. And um, you can, if you have a male goat in with your females, you do have to keep them separate unless you want to breed. And these goats are nowhere near ready to be breeding. They're much too young. They're still little. They're just a little bit bigger than Zoe, actually. Yeah. So we decided on the Nigerian dwarf for the, for the good quality, high butterfat content milk that they produce. They're also, these girls are, we bought them from a, um, a small farm down in the Pierce area of Arizona, and it's called Levitt Family Farm. I think it's Levitt Family Mini Farm, and she raises Nigerian, they both, her and her husband raise Nigerian dwarf goats. They are, um, they're registered, so these, dairy, these goats are registered with the Arizona, no, the American Dairy Goat, I think it's called the ADGA, the Amer American Dairy Goat Association. So they are registered as purebred dairy goats. So that way, if we do decide that we want to breed the two girls down the road, then we have that option of doing that. If we decide we like goats. If we decide we like goats. We've never raised goats. So, so far they seem great. They like to jump on things and, um, they need attention. Too, they need so. attention. Yeah. They're very social. They're, they, when we come outside, they come running over to the fence and they like to be pet and they like loves and they, they're very, um, they're very sweet Yeah. and they sleep good at night. We, they're not, we don't have any, we haven't had any issues at all. So yeah. my plan is to use them as, uh, animal lawn mowers. Yeah. Basically. So <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of creosote on our property and we've already seen them starting to nibble on it. What my hopes would be is to have them, you know, we move them from area to area, you know, let them have like a hundred feet a day and let them cut back on that creosote a little bit so that we yeah. can interplant uh, vegetation for other uh, livestock in the future that would yeah. rather have grass than creosote. Yeah, and goats are, the, so what we're planning on doing is called rotational grazing and it's pretty popular right now. A lot of people are doing it. What it does is it, it, it sequesters them in a certain area they 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 are um browsers goats are browsers so they don't like to eat things off the ground goats like to eat things at about at about right here depending on how tall they are so they like to chew on trees and things like that that they can eat and um so anyway you you start them in a section they they work that section for a while and then depending on how you want to do it you move them to the next section and you rotate them around basically and then it gives the ground and the, the areas that they have been browsing a chance to heal. It also allows parasites that are in the dirt um, or on the dirt to die back because they don't have a host. So it kind of allows that ground to regenerate itself. And then also the goat, goat manure is great for adding um, ni nitrogen yeah. in to the dirt. So organics nitrogen yeah. all that good stuff yeah. but yeah it's uh it's good to start having uh some actual compost that's going to come in now yeah, yeah. Uh, eventually we'll have more but yeah so let's get on to our last uh thing we'd like to talk about and that would be clarice clarice the kitty clara 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 the kitty and how we've been like integrating her into the to uh the into our world <laughs> yeah our world yeah clara she's an outdoor cat she was born and raised on a dairy farm and she has always lived outside she was born outside she doesn't know anything else she's a sweet sweet little kitty she knows her name we're trying not to get too attached to her because sometimes cats don't last very long out here unfortunately but we've provided her as safe as a house that we could think of to build her. We feed and water her. We locked her into her house for a full seven days to let her understand that was her house and get her scent on everything. And she gets her food and water in there. And, and she had a little litter box in there, which she was great about using. And um, we've been slowly letting her out. So we would let her out during the day for a bit of time. And then the next day, a little bit more time. 
and she would just stick around and she just she's really a nice cat um she, we've seen her like going after birds and she definitely is a little hunter kitty so we're hoping she can help control that rodent issue around our car yeah and today talking about cars and yeah. letting her out today was our first day that we let her out early in the morning we said we're gonna let her stay out all day and then put her away at night and she kind of disappeared so i'm like <laughs> after about five hours i uh, started looking for her and i went to the fj and i started setting up my rat traps around the car and spraying down with some of that uh pine saw pine saw in the hood and i heard meow <laughs> and sure as no, sure enough she was in there and not only was she in, i thought she was in the engine block i was like how'd she get in the engine block but she was tucked in between the alternator the fan and the, the radiator yep and she couldn't get out because every time she put her claw up on the fan blade it would just swing around so we did a little mini kitty rescue today and and we pretty much grounded her for the rest of the day she's not allowed out yet so yeah, we're hoping she was in there long enough to get a little hungry and a little thirsty and even a little scared because we don't want her going in the engine unless, of course, she's catching mice. But we'll have to be really careful not to start the engine up without knowing where yeah. she is or checking because that would not be that would not be good. Yep. So, so. like I said, we're multiplying in droves. Uh, that should be it for animals for a little while. We still have one more type of animal we want on the on the uh farmstead but uh we might wait a little while for that yeah but next video we might be back on these hopefully if all of our parts come in and we get a uh, bonnie rolling well, i can go down and get a bunch of dirt we'll get it sifted yep. and we'll get rolling on these bags we kind of are depressed in all ways because we've had like almost a full like seven days of beautiful weather we could oh have had gosh. most of this done Perfect. already 70 and, degrees every day not hardly any wind yep and it's just like lost opportunities so we're just making it up by doing all these other side projects but we're getting things done it's just we're not getting the chicken house done yeah but uh yeah that's it guys yeah thanks for sticking around to the end we appreciate you guys hope you have a great week and remember to subscribe if you're new to this channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video yeah we appreciate that and we'll see you guys See ya. Hopefully the wind isn't, uh, hopefully the wind isn't too bad. Does it hurt to get up? <laughs>